Good morning, and welcome to our presentation reflecting our findings on emergency preparedness and access to vulnerable populations. Throughout our investigation, we explored questions surrounding the feasibility of emergency preparedness and kit distribution throughout the city of Hamilton. The next few minutes, we'll touch on our survey responses to stakeholders, key literature we found useful for the comparison of other municipalities and their approach to emergency preparedness, as well as our final recommendation. Our primary research consisted of creating and sending out a survey to relevant stakeholders that could help us better understand emergency preparedness in the city of Hamilton. We received responses from four expert connections and compiled them into a matrix with aggregate takeaways. Overall, we identified specific marginalized populations across Hamilton that the city currently fails to represent sufficiently, geographic areas of concern, and guidance about existing services that could assist with preparedness kit distribution. The following slide is what the survey matrix looks like. Our bibliography of resources consists of more than 30 entries that include comparable studies of, on emergency preparedness. It is formatted so that the title, author, region, and a short text summary are clearly stated. And finally, there is a URL that is accessible to anyone. Two key insights from our findings are that there is a discrepancy for vulnerable populations in risk communication, and emergency preparedness services in Hamilton are predominantly informal. Our recommendations aim to reduce this communication barrier and leverage Hamilton's emergency preparedness infrastructure by providing citizens with tangible access to preparedness kits. Vulnerable populations face increased risk during emergencies. These groups may not have access to information, resources, or emergency preparedness services provided by the government. The consideration and inclusion of these groups during emergency preparedness is critical, as it not only ensures a more comprehensive planning process, but demonstrates a level of respect and trust for these groups. To break down this communication barrier with vulnerable populations, we recommend that the City of Hamilton follow the Vulnerable Populations Outreach Model. This model develops sustainable partnerships with community-based organizations that serve vulnerable populations in Hamilton and works to provide tailored messaging to communicate emergency preparedness messages to the populations they serve. Potential partnerships in Hamilton that serve vulnerable populations include Community Living Hamilton and CNIB Hamilton. Our goal with the City of Hamilton subsidy for emergency preparedness is to provide funding for households to acquire tangible emergency supplies to supplement the strong informational resources that are currently available to the public. The idea is relatively simple. The City would partner with reputable organizations that produce EPKs, such as the Canadian Red Cross or the Salvation Army, and subsidize the purchase of these kits for households within the City. There are four EPK options that we've identified. Both the Red Cross and Salvation Army develop pre-made basic and deluxe kits ranging from $50 to $220. Our cost model took the after-tax unit of cost, adding in shipping and handling, which came to $30 based on the average dimensions of each kit. This example has been laid out to show capital Hamilton would need to raise if they wanted to subsidize 5,000 kits. The bottom portion of the model shows how it would cost the city based on eight different subsidization intervals. We've included this cost analysis as one of our deliverables, and the city can use it accordingly as they determine how much funding they can set aside. Unfortunately, our research faced several limitations. The limited sample size means that survey responses may not truly reflect expert recommendations. Our list of stakeholders is also limited to the project team's connections, which reduces the scope of perspectives that we hear from. Managing expectations about deliverables and research direction was also challenging, resulting in delays in research and idea generation. Despite these limitations, sending out the survey was beneficial in raising awareness about the initiative and upcoming report and served as an effective starting point in informing our tangible recommendations. Thank you for listening to our presentation.